So, I've got something super cool for you today on the Ton Does Linux podcast, and um, I'm actually really excited about this one because it's something that, you know, affects literally everyone using Linux. Oh man, I've been looking forward to this episode for weeks. Security is like absolutely my favorite topic to dive into. Well, uh... Oof. You're definitely the right person to talk to about this. I mean, you've been working with Linux security for what? T t like 10 years now? Yeah, yeah. And you know what's crazy? The fundamentals, right? They haven't really changed that much, but... And this is the interesting part. The ways we implement them keep evolving. You know what I mean? That's actually exactly why I wanted to do this episode. I keep seeing all these questions from our listeners about um, security best practices, and I figured we should probably cover the essentials. Absolutely. And the timing couldn't be better because, you know, security threats are getting more sophisticated every day. But don't worry, we're going to break everything down into super practical steps that anyone can follow. Perfect. So shall we dive right into it? I've got a whole list of things I want to ask you about. Let's do it. I'm telling you, by the end of this episode, everyone listening is going to have a solid foundation for keeping their Linux system secure. So let's start with something I think a lot of our listeners struggle with, um, user permissions and access control. Like what's the first thing people should know about this? Okay, so here's the thing. The absolute foundation of Linux security is, and has always been, this principle of least privilege, right? What that means is that users and processes should only have access to what they need, nothing more. That sounds pretty straightforward, but how do you implement that? So, first thing, right? And this is super important. You should never ever use the root account for your daily operations. Like, you know how some people just log in as root because it's easier? That's basically like leaving all your doors and windows open in your house. Really? Even if you're just doing some quick maintenance? Even then, look, the thing is, when you need those elevated privileges, that's exactly what sudo is for. And the beautiful thing about sudo is that it lets you give specific permissions to specific users for specific commands. So how would someone set that up properly? Right, so you want to start by creating individual user accounts for everyone who needs access to the system. Then, and this is crucial, you use groups to manage permissions. Like, let's say you have a team working on a project, right? Instead of giving each person permissions individually, you create a group, add them to it, and then manage the permissions at the group level. What about file permissions? That's something that comes up a lot. File permissions are absolutely critical. So you've got your basic read, write, and execute permissions, but, and here's where people often mess up, you need to regularly audit these permissions. Like you should be checking that sensitive files aren't accidentally set to 777, which basically means anyone can do anything with them. Is there, is there an easy way to check for that? Yeah, yeah, there actually is. You can use commands like find to scan your system for files with dangerous permissions. And, and what I always tell people is to get in the habit of using these commands regularly. You know what I mean? Make it part of your routine maintenance. So, um, after setting up those permissions properly, what about keeping the system secure over time? Like, what's the deal with updates and package management? Man, this is absolutely critical. Because, you know, keeping your system updated is like, probably the single most important thing you can do for security. And, and the thing is, a lot of people don't realize that most security breaches happen through known vulnerabilities that already have patches available. Is there a specific way we should be handling these updates? So, first thing you want to do, you need to make sure you're only using official repositories, right? Because, and this is super important, unofficial repos can contain malicious packages or, or outdated software with security vulnerabilities. What commands should people be using for this? Right, so in Debian-based systems, you're going to want to regularly run apt update and apt upgrade. But here's the thing that's really crucial. You should also be using apt show versions to check for packages that might be outdated or have security updates available. How often should people be doing these updates? So you definitely want to set up automatic security updates, right? And there's this amazing tool called unattended upgrades that can handle this for you. But here's the really important part. You still need to manually review and install major system updates, 
because those might need some testing first. What about managing the actual software sources? This is where people often make mistakes. You need to be super careful about what you add to your sources.list. Like every time you add a PPA or external repository, you're basically, you're extending your trust to that source. And you need to make sure these sources are using HTTPS, right? Because that prevents package manipulation during download. And what about cleaning up old packages? Oh yeah, that's a great point. You should regularly run auto remove to clean up unused packages and dependencies because, well, every extra package is potentially another security risk, right? And don't forget to clean up old kernels too, because they can take up space and, you know, potentially create confusion during updates. So, um, speaking of system security, what about firewalls? I know Linux has some built-in stuff, but like, hmm, what's the best way to handle that? Oh man, firewalls are just, they're absolutely essential, right? And Linux has this amazing built-in firewall called IP tables, but, you know, for most users, I really recommend using UFW, which is like this fantastic front end that makes everything so much simpler. What exactly does UFW do for us? So UFW, it's like, it basically manages all your network traffic rules, right? And, and the beauty of it is that it makes everything super straightforward. Like by default, it's gonna deny all incoming connections and allow all outgoing ones, which is exactly what most people need. How do we get started with it? First thing you wanna do is, you need to install UFW if it's not already there. Then, and this is super important, you gotta make sure you enable SSH first if you're doing this remotely, because otherwise you might lock yourself out. So you type um, UFW allow SSH and then UFW enable. What are some essential rules people should set up? Right, so you definitely wanna think about what services you're actually running, right? Like if you're running a web server, you need to open ports 80 and 443 for HTTP and HTTPS. And, and if you're running something like, say a mail server, you'd need those specific ports too. Are there any common mistakes people should watch out for? Absolutely. The biggest one is people sometimes get too generous with their rules, right? And they'll do something like allow traffic from any IP to any port which is just, it's basically defeating the whole purpose of having a firewall. You want to be really specific with your rules and, and only open exactly what you need. What about monitoring the firewall? So this is really cool. UFW makes it super easy to see what's going on. You can just use UFW status verbose and it'll show you all your active rules and, and even the traffic that's being blocked. And you should definitely check those logs regularly because, well, they can tell you if someone's trying to probe your system. Hey, um, you've talked about firewalls, but what about SSH? I keep hearing it's super important for remote access. Oh man, SSH is just, it's absolutely critical, right? And, and securing it properly is like one of the most important things you can do because, you know, it's often the main way people access their systems remotely. What's the first thing someone should do to make SSH more secure? So the very first thing you wanna do is you need to disable root login through SSH, right? And this is super simple. You just need to edit the SSH config file and set permit root login to no, because allowing root login is just, it's basically asking for trouble. What about passwords? Should we keep using those? That's actually a really good question. And the answer is no. What you really want to do is switch to key-based authentication, right? It's just, it's so much more secure than passwords because each key pair is unique and, and practically impossible to crack. How do we set that up? So first you generate your key pair on your local machine using SSH key gen, right? And then you copy the public key to the server using SSH copy ID. Once that's done, you can actually disable password authentication completely in your SSH config by setting password authentication to no. Are there any other important settings we should change? Oh yeah, absolutely. You definitely want to change the default port from 22 to something else because, because that's like the first thing attackers look for. And you should also limit which users can use SSH by using the allow users directive. 
What about monitoring SSH access? So this is really important. You want to keep an eye on your auth logs, right? And there are some great tools like fail to ban that can automatically block IP addresses that show suspicious behavior. Like if someone's trying to brute force their way in, fail to ban will just, it'll shut them down automatically. Any other SSH hardening tips? Yeah. So you should definitely set up a login banner that warns unauthorized users and configure SSH to use only the latest protocol version. And one thing people often forget is limiting the authentication attempts. You know, set max auth tries to something low, like three or four. So um, with all these security measures we've talked about, how do we actually know if they're working? Like how do we keep track of what's happening on our system? Oh man, monitoring is just, it's absolutely crucial, right? And, and Linux actually gives us some amazing tools for this. The first thing you really need to understand is the importance of logging, because logs are like, they're basically your system's diary, right? What are the most important logs we should be checking? So there are several really critical ones. First, you've got your system logs in var log syslog, right? And, and then there's the auth log, which tracks all authentication attempts. But, but what's really important is that you don't just have logs you need to actually monitor them actively. What tools can help us with that? Oh, there are some fantastic tools. Like Audit D is just, it's incredibly powerful for system auditing. And, and then you've got tools like LogWatch that can send you daily summaries of your logs. But my absolute favorite is, it's probably fail to ban, which we mentioned earlier, because it actually takes action when it spots suspicious activity. What should we be looking out for in these logs? So you really want to watch for like failed login attempts, right? And, and any unusual system behavior or, or unexpected service starts and stops. What's really important is establishing a baseline of what's normal for your system, because that's how you spot when something's not right. Are there any automated monitoring solutions? Yeah, absolutely. So there's this great tool called Nagios, right? And you've got other options like Zabbix or Prometheus that can monitor your system in real time. These tools are just, they're amazing because they can alert you immediately when something looks suspicious. What about resource monitoring? That's actually super important too, because unusual resource usage can be a sign of security issues. Tools like HTOP and IOTOP are great for real time monitoring. And, and you can use something like CollectD to gather long-term performance data. This helps you spot patterns that might indicate a security problem. So, um, after everything we've covered today, what would you say are like the absolute most important things our listeners should focus on first? Oh man, security is, it's really all about layers, right? And, and if I had to pick the most critical things, I'd say start with the basics. Like first, really get your user permissions sorted out because that's your foundation, right? And then make sure you've got a solid update strategy in place. Any specific steps they should take right away? Yeah, absolutely. First thing, you want to audit your current users and groups, right? And, and then set up automatic security updates. That's just, it's absolutely crucial. Then get your firewall configured because that's your first line of defense. And please, please set up key-based authentication for SSH if you haven't already. What about someone who's just getting started with Linux security? So, the thing is, start small, right? Like, don't try to implement everything at once because that can be, it can be overwhelming. Focus on one thing at a time, get it working properly, and then move on to the next. And, and remember that security is an ongoing process, not just a one-time thing. I'm any final words of wisdom for our Tundas Linux listeners? Yeah, I'd say the most important thing is to just just stay vigilant, right? Keep learning, keep updating and and always assume that security can be improved because at the end of the day, good security isn't about being perfect. It's about being proactive and consistent. Thanks, Ton. This has been super informative. Really appreciate you sharing all this knowledge with us today. Thanks for having me. And, and remember everyone, 
Security might seem daunting at first, but, but once you get these basics down, it becomes second nature. Looking forward to hearing how everyone implements these practices.